Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. has started in a tropic company and a bunch of cash cow companies while in Hong Kong 10 years ago. Now he's the host of CEO Wisdom, the podcast, and the founder of Charles Cormier Coaching. Please welcome Charles Cormier. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I am here with somebody who reached out to me. I'm really excited about this conversation because this individual is, he had, he's doing a lot. Uh, in fact, the way he describes himself is an individual that does not cut any edges. He's been doing, uh, he's, he's kind of a serial entrepreneur. Uh, he's been working, he's about started several different cash companies, um, really focusing while he's working in Hong Kong, ultra athletic, as he calls himself, hyper learner, biohacker, and a serial entrepreneur going for trillions. Charles, how are we doing? Yeah. So top please, I mean, cold email, everyone knows what cold email is. It's uh, fetching contacts and sending them emails at scale uh, using AI. Um, I do a lot of things, but yeah, in the chaotic front end, there is some sense on the back end to all of this. So my first company was a uh, new tropic. I've always been quite ambitious and have some um, thesis that I test constantly. And the one that I've been trying to crack at least for the past 10 years was to build the business of mine that will build other businesses. So a system that can help me crack the capitalist code. It's taking me longer than I thought, but I'm starting a bunch of businesses and cold email helps me do that. I can test various markets with various product and various offers and get product market fit. When I do that, I scale it, um, whether it's through AI or hiring a CEO that will manage uh, that business of mine. So I have multiple agencies. Uh, the cold email still, yeah, probably the main one, but I also do podcasting as a service. I do mastermind as a service. It's all uh, productized services, um, most of which generate at least 20K MRR. Um, and then once we reach that point, uh, we hire a CEO, try to reach 100K MRR and eventually a million per month. So uh, that's basically what I do. I have an ecosystem of businesses and slowly but surely growing my empire 1% a day. Now, you mentioned for the listeners at home, MRR, what is it? Yeah, it's monthly recurring revenue. So uh, yeah, that's... It just makes sense to build your businesses on, on monthly recurring revenue because the classic model is, you know, there's various levels to it. First, it's selling your time, right? That's probably the weakest. Um, at this point, if I'm selling my time, it's nothing under 5K an hour. Most people uh, very much undervalue themselves at like 50 an hour, you know, as, as consultants. So you don't want to do that. If anything, you want to sell your energy pieces of your knowledge, um, for example, make a course um, and sell that at scale. Um, then once you're done selling your time, you know, you you do uh, you do packages. So you have packages on your website. I I say, I, I will do this for for that price. At this point, you're selling your your energy. The best is, well, in my opinion, and in many other um, successful founders, to sell. Um, something that's recurring that comes back to you on a monthly basis. Why? Um, because you're always forced to deliver a, a better product on a monthly basis so that you can get the renewal, right? And it forces you to improve 1% better on a daily basis. And eventually you can have a very competitive product and um, acquire a good uh, part of the market. Now, one of the things you mentioned was product market fit. I actually wrote about this recently in the newsletter. How do you get it? what is what is it first and how do you get it yeah there's various definitions uh i believe the most classic definition is 
like getting a million dollars as um as a company that's when you know in less than a year that is um, cuz you can take forever to to get that but to me and to to many you know like once you're done with the numbers part it's it's a gut feeling cuz on my side I've launched most more than 1500 uh sequences and let's say that probably one to two percent of these were major uh, product market fit, uh, so much so that I decided to build businesses on on these and really invest more of my energy token in these. So a product market fit in my field, uh, it's basically launching a campaign targeting someone with some specific offer. If we take Mastermind as a service, for example, targeting coaches and consultants with that, People want to build their own masterminds with existing clients, right? It brings insights, it brings accountability, it brings emotional support because it's really lonely as a founder or CEO. So you just reunite four CEOs in a room. Just that people don't know how to do that. They already have their practice, but they need help in finding these members, defining what the mastermind's about. And they're just anxious, you know, like people, when they don't know, they they fear and fear sales, you know, like that's business for me. So I send them an email. Let's say it's called um, the Gabriel Flores Mastermind. That's the title of the email. And you're like, oh, that's interesting. I haven't thought of that. Maybe I, I could start my Gabriel Flores Mastermind. And you will respond to me. Then me, I'm sending a thousand emails per day under that campaign, right? If I get a reply rate that's around, let's say 2.5%, that's 25 responses a day. That's a lot. And let's say that half of these will be positive, right? Hey, Charles, send me more info about the mastermind as a service. That's 10 responses per day. That's probably what I get, by the way, for real, uh, on the mastermind as a service. So when you get 10 positive re replies a day, that's already a very good sign um, that you're onto something, that the market needs what you want. So that basically, to answer your question, it's the market that speaks. You know, at this point, I have my opinions, but... I don't care. I don't get rich by having opinions. I get rich by having my opinions validated by the market. And, and then obviously we look at the close rate. Uh, does this product close? Is the close rate, close rate higher than 15 to 20% in this market? That might seem low. Uh, historically, close rate was 30%, but yeah, we're in a down market. And finally, how can I get paid, you know, compared to my other businesses that I run? You know, Mastermind is a service. Uh, right now it's 1.5K a month. Uh, if I coach you how to do it, if uh, I do it for you, it's 2.5K. We're about to increase, this, increase those price, but we calculate the energy input vs. what we get as an output in terms of cash, right? So there's various definition. And, and then I could add one last on top of it. And it's Ikigai. Do I have fun doing that on my side? You know, is, is it a passion of mine to help people reunite, aka CEOs, right? Reunite in one room and talk about their business, their goals, make them accountable and support them. And if I check all of these boxes, to me, that's a product market fit. It's a business that I can potentially scale. Now, scale doesn't last forever. It needs to stop at some point, but yeah, I'll still give it a shot and I'll I'll squeeze the orange to get as much juice that I can in the, the next couple of months. Now, how do you kind of go through the process of, you, you know, you mentioned you kind of send out newsletters and the market kind of speaking to you. What other, what all mediums do you use? What avenues do you use to kind of connect with your, with your customers? It's 95% cold email, you know, cause that's, it's so powerful. I pay a tool uh, called Apollo.io. I paid hundred bucks a month that grants me 10,000 contacts and I have I have gazillions account on Apollo, um, meaning that yeah I probably get somewhere around like 200k contacts a month, right? That new contacts, right? And I already have an existing database. There's already emails that are being sent on a daily basis. I have evergreen sequences that just never stops, meaning that uh, bottom line, you know, I send a, a shit ton of emails on a monthly basis, and I don't pay much for that. If yes, if I would invest that money into LinkedIn or into other channels. So at least 90% of my 120 meetings that I get per week are generated through cold email. I started doing what I know as well because I own multiple agencies over the year. Uh, for example, remarketing is, is a good one because everyone that visits my website and show uh, some love, show that they were attracted by my offer, they will re-see my ads over and over again. So I'm investing a bit more into that. 
and I'm looking into more channels, but cold email is so hard to max out, right? Because in Apollo, there's also LinkedIn outreach in there. So it's like cold email on day one, LinkedIn outreach on day three. Um, I'm also looking to calls because I own multiple call centers back in the days, but I don't believe calls scales as much. I wouldn't recommend that one, but for folks listening, and that is pretty wide, but even if you're low employees, if you're if you're high employees or low revenue or high revenue, cold email, like most people just do not um, use it enough. They're scared. They think, it, they think it's illegal. They think it will ruin their reputation. Um, they think they will get in the spam, which is right, um, what, which is why I help people uh, scale their campaigns. But it's most of them are misconceptions, and I would encourage people to to try at least a tool like Apollo and and cold email the shit out of everyone, get a couple of fuck offs, and um, improve their approach in the process to you know just get that hundred meetings a week eventually. Now, hundred meetings might be a lot for people. What you might do at that stage is just filter out people, right? Like out of a hundred responses, you take only the ten best, and yeah, it's. It's a beautiful system. How have you continued to improve? Because one of the things you mentioned was you basically, you got a couple of fuck offs. How did you improve it? How did you kind of get to that turning point where you got a little less of that? Yeah. So not all feedback is good feedback, right? Like at first it's ego. Um, it's good to have an ego because it pushes you to, to want more in life and constantly improve myself. But me personally, and I think most people are like that as well. As, so, as soon as they get uh, criticized, you know, we feel it in our core and it just feels like shit. You know, if someone tells you like, oh, your email is bad, you're a fucking idiot. Um, yeah, it just feels bad. But I have a, a trick for that and it's called exposure, you know. So and that's the beauty of scale. The most you the more you get exposed to hate and feedback, the more you can take it and the more you can take it as a seed and eventually that's that seed will go, grow into a tree so obviously sometimes there's a lot of anger right like even if you do ads or or anything out there sometimes people have very bad days and when they see your stuff they will just hate on it they will spit out venom you know i mean they're i don't know their child is sick uh, they just got divorced and uh, that's the real reason why they have all that pent-up anger but they, they send it to you. So when it's that, you know, I mean, you might find a gem or two and in, in that sort of feedback, most of it is just like pure hate and there's value into that because it makes you more patient, but you just extract some of it. And let's say that I get, I mean, I don't get much hate nowadays because my emails are quite good. Um, but let's say that I get three times a day, like, Hey, I didn't understand your offer. Then you know that like you need to rephrase. And I actually had that today uh, twice, you know, so I know that I need to be more clear in the copy um, of, of my uh, campaigns there. And for the rest, you know, the, the more feedback that you get, the more you aggregate it over time. It I call it let it, it sink, you know, you, you just gather all that feedback in your brain. And with time, I don't know, you, you chill, you do activities that relax yourself. And finally, the insights, it's fully packaged you know it's like a gif it surfaces boom um one day oh i i need to stop marketing to uh ceos under 10 employees and then you modify that so some insights are like quicker um and urgent right like let's say that you fucked up a tag in your email and you it just doesn't pop that's a big error well you you fix it quick but some other errors you need a lot of feedback especially when you're stubborn like myself you know and that needs like more time and to seek in sort of yeah no that's a good point how do you continue to figure out ways to bring value like how do you create new ideas you, you mentioned you you've done a bunch of uh, businesses how do you continue to create product ideas the podcast basically is a big mechanism. So I just interview a bunch of people and I discover if they're full of shit or if they have a good business idea. It's quite easy after interviewing more than 1000 CEOs, you know, to know who has it and who doesn't. I can even know like in the first uh, 20 seconds if someone, you know, has a, a full fledged business or not, you know, other than if they are like sort of a, a autistic or like a very, introverted then it's hard to know their character and so forth and to judge a business but i speak to so many folks that i just have this 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 meter in me that that tells me if if someone has a good business or not 
Uh, also, the questions that I ask, I have a bunch of sources of data. As you know, I check their website, I check their LinkedIn, I check their ambition as well. That's so over, uh, underrated, you know. What what's someone amb- someone's ambition? They want to reach trillions, or are they okay to cruise at at uh, 100k per month? Let's say. So with that, I I just uncovered these ideas. Then I cross correlate stuff. I also consume my data on uh, YouTube, audiobooks. Um, and most importantly, I take all of this data and I send campaigns, cold email campaigns with it. So I test out these hypotheses, you know, and then uh, I get a bunch of replies uh, in my mailbox. So I just check out probably like at least 50 companies on a daily basis. I have other companies too that bring me other clients and I get a more intimate view of, of the client's business. And I just constantly test out stuff, you know, so it's a complex sort of lab that constantly test out hypotheses, get some partial conclusions. And yeah, it's it's a process that I still haven't defined yet because it's, it's sort of complex and still not well-defined. But in the end, I test out hypotheses in real time, right? Uh, because these emails are in real time and everyone checks their emails. And from there, I can know if something is um, good or not. Now, what do you, what, what kind of tactics, what measuring tools do you use to test your hypothesis? Yeah, Apollo for the cold email. So can I share my screen? Or is, Please, are you going to publish that on YouTube? I can if you want to, yeah. Yeah, let just uh, allow me to share my screen and I'll, I'll show you some systems yep. there. So folks, this is actually a great opportunity as well to let you folks know that, hey, we do have a YouTube channel. So please make free to check out the YouTube channel. Uh, and then you can also go ahead and uh, check out, go ahead and check out the Shades of E on YouTube. And you'll be able to actually see uh, these video clips as well as reels. So that's a great little plug there. Charles, let's see it. Yeah. So, okay. Apollo.io, right? Um Let's see what account that is. Yeah, so that's a client's account. So I need to log out of there. Apollo.io, guys, basically 100 bucks a month gives you 10,000 contacts. And it's a cold email tool, Mike, right? A lot of people ask me, what's the difference between this and HubSpot or MailChimp? These tools, they don't accept cold email. You really need to use a tool like Apollo, connect it with SendGrid, which is super important. SendGrid is 20 bucks a month. That will allow you to reach email scale. So to your question, you know, like me, I just go in my sequences and there you'll see my trove of chaos and magic to me, which is like all the the campaigns that I deployed takes a good time to load because there's so many in there. Uh, But as you can see at the bottom, there's 374 campaigns on this account. I have multiple and there's multiple uh, tests going on here. A lot of it is like the podcast, right? So basically, you can see here uh, private equity um, podcast, for example, um, government nonprofits, you know. So I get my data by talking to all of these folks and I get more ideas. And then I, I start campaigns on Apollo again um, to test out these ideas. AI agencies, some are direct offers like, hey, do you want to start your podcast and so forth? As you can see, all the open rates are pretty high. And the reply rate, everything's over 2.5%. Um, so I get lots of responses. And you'll see some bigger campaigns, you know, with a lot of uh, contacts added. Let's take uh, this one here. Uh, CEOs, you know, 4.5K active. So this stuff, it just scales. And then I get like all these replies in my mailbox, like not interested. This guy here is like, yeah, share me the details. So what I do... I just reply here and modify his name and I send, you know, so that's the offer of the podcast funnel. It's, it's a big email, but I've AB tested and people like that. I also mentioned my price uh, upfront in these emails so that people don't waste my time. Cause I've got, um, I'm in a specific situation, right? Like most people, they need to follow up. Uh, most people, they don't mention the prices cause they really want to talk to people me, me, I'm overbooked, you know, like um, my my calendar looks like this here. And my again, my calendar takes time to load because it's just craziness. Um, it looks like this. That's my average week. So basically, I, I don't want to speak to folks that are not sure, like, 
of my prices and so forth. Like I just want to get it over with. So to answer your question, again, everything is super centered on Apollo.io um, and just the search feature so that folks can understand here. Uh, let's say that I want family offices, right? CEOs of family offices. Well, here I already made up a search. I just click on it and the title will be CEOs, will be founders. And then I use I can use the keywords and I can basically research anyone, anywhere in the world um, for that regard. So yeah, that's my little laboratory here. Wow. Uh, now folks, if you're not going on the YouTube, just to kind of give you a quick rundown. This is basically a, a quick, you know, Apollo AI with a uh, grid basically is a, is a nice tool to use to send out mass amount of, you know, campaign emails. You'll actually get your click through rate, your open rate, your spam rate, um, reply rate, a great way to kind of, as again, to, to Charles's point, it's really is, you know, cold emails. Uh, you know, I used to work in the real estate, I used to do cold calls and you get a lot of, you know, get out. Well, who the hell are you? Stop calling me. I don't need to talk to you. Who doesn't have a realtor, you know? Uh, to, to Charles points, so you never know if they had a good day or a bad day. Not sure. We're just trying to get to the, and that's fine. Uh, I'd rather get to a no faster or because it gets me, lets me to get to the next call to get to the yes. Right. So the sooner I get to a no, then the sooner I can get to somebody else who, who's actually going to give me a yes. Now, Charles, what's, what's the goal? What's the next mission? Where are you, where are you going to, what's the next, you know, five, 10 years look like? Well, um, they look interesting for sure. Um, what I projected for myself, I haven't reached it because they're moonshot, but I think I've reached probably 80% of what I've said for myself. So life is interesting, right? Life will not give you exactly what you want, but will give you a version of it. And again, you can A-B test that system and try to, to hack it, which will still be my goals. Hopefully, I'll be done with this business that will create other businesses and crap, crack... Uh, capitalism so that I can focus mostly on general artificial intelligence and longevity, aka not dying uh, in terms of businesses. And yeah, to your audience, I mean, they're folks that are starting their businesses. Um, Apollo, I mean, is super duper cheap, you know, I'm affiliated with them, but obviously I won't get any money from that. You know, I don't, I won't send you even a link, just try this tool or even cold email. If you have a Gmail, you can start cold emailing just that you can't do it at scale else Gmail will, will ban you. So if you're in business, send a couple of these emails, you know, get these deals um, on. That's always a priority when you start a business, especially if you're bootstrapped. Uh, it's to get these clients, get these this feedback, get this data. And yeah, from there, just get on phone calls, understand your clients, constantly test out things and don't only have this experimental mindset in business, bring it to your personal life, you know, A-B test stuff in your life, a diet. Oh, how am I chicken? How am I feeling when I eat chicken VS um, uh, when I eat beans, you know, do I feel sluggish? Uh, do, do I feel good or bad? Oh, if I use this reaction with my um, spouse, will she feel that way? You know, A-B test what you say and and calculate and analyze everything that you do. Even take notes if if you want. And now we have tools like ChatGPT that you can upload that data in if you're a super nerd. You know, you can have an Excel sheet, write it down, and now ChatGPT can tell you, oh, it looks like when you say this to your spouse, she reacts better, you know? Uh, it's stuff that our brains are not made to data. So, have an experimental mindset. And that also means that when you fail, you, you just don't give a shit, you know, it's just data uh, that you will use in the future to make better decisions. So try that experimental mindset and be stoic about things. Uh, do what's in your control and just don't give a crap about what you, you can't control. I love it. Now, if, for the folks at home that are interested in maybe contacting you, want to hear more about you, maybe want to learn about your website, how do they, how do they learn more about Charles? Yeah, Charles called me on, on Google. Perfect. And is there anything else? Or what what else do you like to listeners know before we leave? That I'm there with them. I love them. And uh, I, I, you think sometimes that you're alone fighting, but you're not, you know. We're, we're all into this together. And yeah, uh, there will be good days. There will be bad days. Just keep on going like Winston would, would say. I love it. 
Again, folks, Charles, the CEO of Top Leads Cold Email, he just dropped some gems. Uh, again, I hope you take some time to go look on the YouTube page, uh, The Shades of E. Uh, we're putting up some reels, and we'll start putting up the full episodes here at the beginning of the year as well, I'm getting working on that as well. Charles, thank you again so much for your time. Thank you again for all of the help you give me in my professional life, as well as uh, things you're giving the, the uh, audience here. I really do appreciate your time. I'm going to let you get back to it with that insane schedule. So thank you again for your time. Enjoy the rest of the day. For everybody else, thank you and have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to The Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow The Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.